Welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. I got in there just you before. Did, didn't you? Stu, I was going to tell me that. Literally <laughs> seconds before. Um, uh, as you can see, we're as professional as always after uh, last night's event. I'm Blake Harrison. Stu Whiffin opposite me. Stu, how you doing, mate? I'm all right. I'm all right. Had a good night's sleep last night. Woke up nice and, and and early. Had a little frosty walk with the dog, and then sat down and watched UFC. And Lovely. boy, it delivered. It did, didn't it? It, it was well. It was interesting. Yeah, there, was, there's uh... some bits that I definitely think are going to be discussed, not just by us, but by the MMA community for uh, for some yes. time to come. Um, yeah, you've just caught up, haven't you? Um, I've just. Got, I mean, there, there was one or two prelim fights I didn't get to watch because we we are pushed for time in terms sure. of like us being able to get together and do this yeah. uh, show. Um, and so I just kind of rattled through as much as possible uh, with the kids jumping around <laughs> around me while I was trying to watch it. So, um, yeah, but I did what I did have to do was tr- dropping straight into the main event yeah. is uh, I had to go back and watch about three of the rounds of the main event just to go. Did I miss something here? What's going on? Yeah. So, I mean, sh- I'm assuming we should start with the main event and a split draw, I believe it was. Blahovic uh, and Kalaev, right? Yeah, between mm-hmm. Blahovic and Kalaev, a split draw. The light heavyweight title remains vacant. Um, I think it's fair to say that most people thought Ankalaev won that fight. Yeah. I did as well, both on uh, my first watch and just rewatching a couple of bits. What do you, is there anything that kind of leaps out at you? in terms of the fight itself or the decision or any of that stuff? Where where do you kind of want to start with it? Um, I'll start. Um, well, I thought um, Jan's low kicks were really, really solid. I was very impressed oh. with him. And, yeah. uh, and you could see he was switching stances because he was in bother. And uh, yeah. and I thought, I thought Jan started really strong. Um, but then I just thought, and I have just sort of controlled it from from pretty much definitely ran sort of three to five. I thought he he, he really sort of took control. Um, I just thought I thought it was a bit of a robbery, um, and the fact that, that that Yan seemed to acknowledge that like quite quickly, yeah. and you know he, what what a lovely fella he is, and oh yeah, and I, I thought it was really interesting. <laughs> The Ankalaya post fight was quite an interesting interview. Before we get on to that, because that's when I think things started to get really interesting. And then yeah. from what the outcome in the post fight, which I've not seen, but I've seen some bits on socials that I know you've you've watched. But talk me through how you saw the fight. So initially, there was a couple of rounds that I wasn't 100 percent sure of. I had like question marks over Ankalaev's name in uh, I think maybe rounds one and rounds three. And so I was a bit unsure. So I did have to go back and rewatch a few moments of that, of particularly rounds one and three. So my initial thoughts are just to kind of look through the kind of the scoring of it. I think the obvious rounds, the really obvious rounds are rounds four and five. Ankalaev is on top. For most of that, he's doing damage. He's causing all sorts of problems. They are clearly Ankalaev rounds for me, four and five. Round two, I think was a clear Jan Blachowicz round mm-hmm. because that's when those leg kicks were really mm-hmm. piling up and you saw Ankalaev limping around and really struggling with that. Rounds one and three are the ones where you go, okay, these are the close rounds that I wasn't overly sure of on a first watch. Although on first watch, I gave them to Ankalaev, mm. but I wasn't totally sure. Round one, uh, the big thing that Jan did was land a big left hook that put a cut over Ankalaev's eye. Mm-hmm. Other than that, though, I kind of felt like Ankalaev was landing loads of good kind of like teak kicks to the body and a few other strikes. And I kind of feel like despite the most impactful strike of the round being Yan's strike, 
the accumulation of Ankalaev strikes did more damage than that one strikes of Jans. So I would say. go, I would go round one Ankalaev. So he's already three rounds up. He's won the fight as soon as it goes to a decision. Round three, I have him rewatch it. I think could have gone either way. You can give round three to Blahovic, in my opinion. Um, the leg kicks from Jan visually were definitely the most impactful stuff of the fight. That's again, you had a couple of leg kicks where Ankalaev just couldn't stand on that leg. Visually to the judges, that's massively impactful. And it's clearly doing a huge amount of damage that potentially could lead to the end of the fight. Yeah. Ankalaev, though, he did land some really good shots as well. Um so I, I did find the again you've got accumulation of Ankalaev versus those impactful strikes of Blahovic. In round one, I think the accumulation beat the impactful left hook of, of Blahovic. In round three, the leg kicks versus the accumulation of Ankalaev strikes, which weren't loads. It wasn't mm. loads, but I, I found that really hard to weigh up. So I'd kind of be okay if you gave round three to Blahovic. I'd mm -hmm. be okay if you gave round three to Ankalaev. So the way I come away from it is you can score this fight, in my opinion, three to two to Ankalaev. Mm -hmm. Or you can score it four to one to Ankalaev. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you get a draw or a Blahovic win from this fight. I, th I think that was, was pretty much the consensus of opinion uh, and Jan Blahovic's opinion. He, uh, he, in, at one point, he said, look, look, rematch. And then he said, look, just give him the bell. Um, Ankalaev in the post fight seemed absolutely disgusted that he wasn't given yeah. that belt. Um, and I can see why. Um, 100%. And then said he, he's not sure if he wants to fight for the organisation anymore. And credit to Rogan. Like, Rogan stepped in and was like, yeah. you know, the organisation has no say over the judges. The judges, you know, made that decision. Um, but you, you could see. I mean, he's he'll have time to reflect on that. And I'm sure, you know. <sighs> but, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, they, they uh, again. It, I, I didn't think it was the most exciting fight. I thought it was all right. No, um, I'll tell you who else didn't think it was the most exciting fight it was Dana White. <laughs> but we'll oh, get really? on to that in a minute. Right? Yeah, he okay. wasn't overly enthused by it. Yeah, it, 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 it was. It wasn't an, a particularly exciting fight. And as we'll discuss, you know, as the pod unfolds, there was a lot of exciting fights on this card. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I um, they got gifted the shot because of, you know, the circumstances with Glover and Yuri. Um, and then the outcome of which is obviously the, the, the title remains vacant. And then from what I gather, from what I've seen on socials, maybe you can expand on it a little bit. Dana then said um, the, the, the the belt is now going to be... Is it the belt or an interim? The belt. Right. So Glover's fighting um, former guest of the show, uh, Jamal Hill. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're Ankalaev, you must be thinking, "Fuck off, mate!" Like, what? Yeah. What? Have I, I've just, I've just been gifted a five round fight when I trained for three, and I bossed them last few rounds, and I've been scored against, and I feel unjust. You know, it's been an unjust decision on me, and I don't get to rematch. I don't get to fight um, Glover. Jamal Hill gets that shot. And, and I mean, I, I understand why Glover is in the mix for that shot, for that, you know, because of what happened between him and Yuri. Mm -hmm. But if I was, if I was Yan or Ankalaev, I'd be thinking, Jamal Hill, why? What? Well, hang on. Like, this is a draw. Like, what, where, where, why are we not featuring in the mix here? Do you think that decision was quickly made on how average that fight was? Definitely. I think I think Dana White, so I'm just pulling up Jamal's uh, record here just to kind of back up. Well, yeah, he's on <clears throat> he's on a three fight win streak. He's supposed to be fighting Anthony Smith next, uh, but I can't. I'm not sure when. Yeah. Uh, oh, back in March, apparently. But Anthony Smith is obviously coming off a bad injury. So there's that. Um, yeah, if you're. If you're Jan Blahovic, I think you have to just go, well, I lost that fight. Yeah, the, I don't have any say in the matter. Ankalaev, I think rightfully can be kind of really pissed off about the situation. 
But Dana White, I think, has got a history of going, I didn't like that fight. I felt like you should have put on a better fight for the fans, publicly saying that and sort of punishing people because of stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, maybe it's also a case where there's, a, there's all sorts of politics that also goes along in the UFC. And what I'm saying now is just sort of off the top of my head. There's no actual kind of evidence of it, but hear me out. Um the headliner for um, the fight night, the, the uh, pay-per-view event in Brazil, UFC 283, I believe is Brandon Moreno versus Figueiredo 4. Yeah. Now, I assume that fight will go ahead, but Brandon Moreno is technically one of James Krause's fighters. And as we've all sp spoke about on the um, post-Orlando show we did, where we talked about the James Krause betting scandal, Fighters from James Krause's gym can no longer fight in the UFC. So they have to move gyms. They have to go somewhere else. I imagine Moreno will do that. But if for whatever reason he wants to stay loyal to James Krause, if he believes James Krause is innocent, maybe he doesn't fight. In which case you go, well, we need a main event. We need a title fight for this. Thing. It was already, you know, flyweights headlining pay-per-views doesn't happen very often. And I think historically they're not big earners. Um, but I think this is different because there's such a backstory with these fighters. Yeah. Every one of their fights has been amazing. I cannot wait for Moreno Figueredo 4. I think that'd be a fantastic fight. But if you want to spice up that card, get a higher weight class title fight in there, that is only going to help that pay-per-view. Yeah, that is yeah. only going to help. Glover Jamal Hill for the light heavyweight title and Moreno Figgy 4 as a co-main event for the flyweight belt. I mean, it's it's a way better pay-per-view pay just by adding, adding that. So... Yeah. Again, the politics of that, you know, you're you're bettering the card. You've got a situation where you don't maybe know 100% if your headliners in Brandon Moreno is going to fight on that card. So it makes total sense for them to cover their bases in this way. And it's nothing against Dan Kalaev. It's all about the politics of getting the best for the pay-per-view. However... Where does that leave him? What, Dan Kalaev? Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, he was saying, I don't know if I want to fight for this organisation again. I can't say that Ankalaev is going to be the biggest draw wherever he goes. I mean, sure, he's got a right to say, I am the best light heavyweight in the world. It very well could be. But, you know, it, he's not a huge earner, I don't think. He's not like a pay-per-view star or anything like that. He's not so, catching charisma either, is he? He's, he's not. not... He's not ca and his fight style is not amazing either. Yeah. Like, he's quite... His striking is very good, but defensively minded. His wrestling is very good, but it's by no means, God, I can't wait to watch Ankalaya fight again. Like, yeah, his highlight reel is not going to be that exciting. No, it's, it's, it's not. But, it's not. But, but wins are wins. And, but wins and, are wins. 100%. And, and, and you've got, you got a feel for him. Like um, he, he looked absolutely gutted last night. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll, will they run back a Blahovich fight? I don't know. And then the winner gets the winner of. Um, Jamal Hill Glover, um, maybe, but then you've got Yeri waiting in the wings as well. It sounds like, like how he's going to be out for a while, doesn't it? it? It does sound like he's going to be out for a while. Dana White said he had like half the shoulder injury that Yeri yeah. had, and it took him like what, like six months to a year yeah. or something like that to get back. I can't remember the exact quote, but they're imagining Yeri to be out for quite some time. Yeah. Um, but you do Glover versus Jamal next month. Mm. If it's a really big fight, I mean, if Glover wins, he'll probably defend the belt, but he's super old if he wanted to retire and vacate that belt again. God, what a crazy situation. The light heavyweight division of the UFC was like the division. Mm. It was Chuck Liddell. It was Tito Ortiz, Lyoto uh, Machida. Then you John got, Jones. Uh, then you got John Jones coming along and dominating for as long as he did. But that seemed to be what... what slightly damage the division in a sense because dominant champions are great but they can also make things a little bit dull they do they just yeah. can and but now you look at that light heavyweight division after john jones has left there's no huge stars in it yeah. at the moment um i think new has got potential to be a superstar 100%, but I mean, he's out for the best part yeah. of the year, and who knows how well he comes back with this. Uh, apparently, it's the worst shoulder injury the UFC have ever seen. So, oh, wow. how well does he come back? Um, well, so, we yeah, saw with, we saw with TJ, didn't we? You know, his shoulder injury, and he's retired this week. 
you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, less said about well, look, TJ. The better, we, we've been but... talking about superstars. Now, obviously, we saw uh, somebody in their fifth UFC fight or fourth? Fourth. Paddy's fourth. Fourth fight. Have we put a bow on this main event thing, by the way? A bit, like, I feel like there's still something to talk about. I can't think off the top of my head, but I feel like it's just, it's such a bit of a clusterfuck, the light heavyweight division right now. And now they're doing this vacant thing where, where like between Glover and Jamal Hill, again, not contractually agreed, but it is apparently like verbally discussed and the UFC have just gone off on that and want to make that happen. It feels just very a quick bit mad, to make that. Knee- it's, it feels quite knee jerk, doesn't it? And, and I think it's very emotional. The- yeah. You should have waited for the dust to settle and, and on, on, on last night's action or, or lack yeah. of, and, and, and just kind of had a, had a chat with them the fighters and, and, yeah, it feels like to then announce that in the press conference feels a little bit, bit of a dirty move, really, and quite disrespectful to, to both fighters, I think. But, Great um, for Jamal, though. Oh, Jamal. Great for Jamal. We He's got the full name, Jamal former guest of the show, Jamal Hill. <laughs> former guest of the show, Jamal Hill. Please go and check out that episode. That was very, very recent. Um, but, yeah, I mean crazy for him he's just sat yeah. at home watching some fights thinking i've got to fight anthony smith in uh, yeah. in three months time and then all of a sudden it's like mate you can fight for a belt against glover absolutely in a month. he must and he's have like, oh. high hopes for, uh, yeah. for glover um right also okay. he can't have he can't have christmas dinner now though he's, he's got he's got you know think about your christmas dinner jamal yeah, can't can't load up on uh, on the Yorkshire puds. Oh mate, he, don't worry. Like literally, by the time all of his kids have finished undoing their presents, it'll be Boxing Day anyway. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Six kids, right? Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah, but no. Good, best of luck to Jamal. I, I want to see him do it. In it. Absolutely. Like Jamal, I love Glover as well. I think it'd be a really really fun fight. So we'll see how that goes. But as Absolutely. you were trying to get onto, and I dragged you back, you were talking right. about superstars. Before we do anything, right? Answer me this. One word. I want a surname, right? And the winner is... Who did you think? Honestly, oh, who did you think won that? Don't put me on the spot like and that. I'll, 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 I'll throw it out there. Jared Gordon. Who did you think won that fight? I I was expecting a Gordon victory, yeah. I feel... Re- I don't like saying it. We're fans of well, Paddy. We've had mate, him on the show. But, but as, <laughs> as, as, as podcasters, we've got to... We've got to be honest about what we saw... Um, have we? Hang on. Have, have we taken an oath? Is there something? That, is there a podcasting oath? Don't turn into the Dana, Dana White of podcasts, like <laughs> saying whatever they want to hear. Just like no, no. I mean, I'm going to come back with a really red face and a shaved head and just be like, "Paddy won it. He did it. Fuck it, mate." Nobody like wants to see Paddy of uh, the hype train get derailed, and and it wasn't derailed spectacularly or anything like that. He got the win, but. I, just, I felt sorry for Jared Gordon. I thought he put on a, a really solid like, performance and I thought fought a smart fight. And yeah, um, yeah I, I thought I thought he was definitely two rounds to one, uh, Gordon, definitely. How did you see it? Okay, this, well, this could lead to an interesting conversation. Which rounds did you give Gordon and then Paddy? Because this could, this could lead to something interesting. I thought one and three was Gordon. Okay, so here's where we've got a little issue then. Okay, go on. Because, and I'm sure people are going to be like, Blake doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Newsflash, I probably don't. But <laughs> well, I have it's read in the, the show notes. It's a disclaimer, it's by notes. the way. We don't know. <laughs> but I have read the scoring criteria. And looking at the scoring criteria, from my opinion, and a lot of people might disagree with this, maybe the scoring criteria in itself can be subjective. We might have to listen to people that know more mm. about it. Uh, uh, in, in future, but round one, Paddy got hit loads by Gordon, and I gave that round to Gordon. It was that had moments where Paddy was coming back for sure, but there was left hooks and right hooks hitting Paddy clean within the first like 90 Low seconds. Hands. So that, Low hands. I mean, it makes the fights exciting. Amazing chin. It does. Really yeah, exciting. But, but don't. I, I, I just for the whole fight, I was like, Paddy, get your hands up. Get your hands up. Please don't yeah, keep know. getting Please, hit. <laughs> But I mean, but he still did quite well yeah. uh, in in moments of that fight. But I did give that round to Gordon. Yeah. Round two, I can't even remember it off the top of my head. Again, I've gone back and rewatched the main event. I probably need to go back and rewatch yeah. 
the co-main. I haven't yeah. done that yet. I've not so gone I back made... and watched that. I watched it yeah. when I was emotionally involved, obviously, because I was just and wanting to see thing, Paddy yeah. win. Yeah, exactly. Same as me, but I haven't rewatched it. So I may rewatch it and 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 change my mind about this. Round two, I've just got round two, Gordon. So as far as I'm aware, Gordon won rounds one and two. Mm-hmm. Then we get into the third round. And this is where the scoring criteria for me, I maybe get confused by it or whatever. Because when you watch the third round, you think, look, one guy is dominating the other guy. Surely this is a Gordon round. However, Damage. from my understanding of the criteria, Gordon landed next to nothing that whole round. It was just push him up against the fence, trying to take him down, all that stuff. Didn't land anything. Paddy, on the other hand, even though it was from defensive weaker positions, elbows. landed elbows. He landed these. I mean, he gets his knee up high, the flexibility mm. of the boy's hips. But like Gordon was there, like when Gordon was trying to get low takedowns, get around the kind of um, get towards the doubles and the singles, Paddy was hitting that kind of side elbow. And Gordon didn't like it. You could tell he didn't like it. Then there was moments where Gordon had his head pressed against Paddy's chest just too far onto the outside. Paddy was able to whip that knee up and get him with it. Was it hugely significant, impactful strikes? No. But was Paddy arguably doing more damage than Gordon? Yes. So for me, I think you can absolutely score round three for Paddy. So mm. if you, which rounds did you score again for Paddy? You scored just one or two? Two. You scored round two for Paddy. Yeah. So again, I'd maybe need to rewatch that one and see, because if you gave two to Paddy and I've given three to Paddy, yeah. Paddy wins. Yeah. Paddy can win. So it's not some kind of huge, like, if you watch that fight, taking all emotion out of it as we should do and just kind of watching and going to someone that doesn't know the scoring criteria, mm -hmm. which of those men won that fight? I yeah. think most people would say Gordon. Mm -hmm. But going by the judges scoring criteria, I mean, we've both decided we think Gordon won that fight, but mm. we've given different rounds to Gordon, which means there is room to manoeuvre there. Mm. And you can make an argument that Paddy won that fight. <clears throat> okay, right. So with that in mind, I'm just mindful to sort of move the, the, the pod on a little bit because there's so many fights I want to talk about. What does this do for Paddy's stock? So, I mean, post-fight, you're going to get Paddy on the mic. It's always going to be entertaining. One thing I did think was a little bit bananas was fight of the night, surely. And it's like, oh, I don't, no. I don't know what else he, he missed on that card, but Paddy, that was not fight of the night, but not by to... a long shot. Like... I don't know whether the week got to Paddy in some sense. Like there was like, Paddy looked amazing on his walkout. He looked amazing with the dancing, looking at Jared dancing, like the showmanship was there. That's why people love him. That's why we're on the Paddy train. That's why he's co-main. That's why he's co-main. And people were wearing the wigs in the crowd. He's in Vegas. He's getting a huge cheer. People are getting their phones out and filming him. You can see the lights. Like, this guy is a star. There's no ifs or buts about it. Whatever you think of his fighting ability, this guy is a star. Can't remember my bloody point now. But I don't I don't think there was anything in that fight. And I and I hate to be negative about Paddy because he's been on the show, you know, several times and he's and he's yeah. such a top fella. But you know, I, I have to be honest, and I, you know, I think there's not many 155ers out there in that top 10 or top 15 that are probably going to be worried about what Paddy's bringing to the table right now. I don't think I, there was anything. I, I don't think there was anything last night that made anybody think, "Holy shit!" Like, the, 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 and we'll get onto some fighters where people are now thinking, "Holy shit!" Um, and one of them you know, has been calling for Paddy the baddie for a long time. Uh, and there's beef there. I know different weight division, but mm. like, um, I just, I don't know. I think does the, the Paddy the baddie madness that surrounds him, like with Connor, Connor can keep losing, but people want to see Connor fight because the lead up to it, the hype, the chat, the hysteria is, is fantastic. I don't know what that's done for, I don't know if the, the, the real heads, not the casuals, the real heads are going to go, okay, so where do we go? What, what, who do, where does Paddy go next? Who's next for Paddy? Because Jared Gordon, solid fighter, 
And um, um, we were talking about Paddy's chin. Props to, to Gordon's chin as well, because Paddy hit him with a lot as well. Yep. Uh, yep. And he never really looked too phased by it. And I think Paddy um, referenced that. I think Paddy said he's, as well, if I'm right, he's hurt his foot. Um, yes, he did say that. And I think that's worth noting because these things yeah. happen. He said he reckons he's he's done something to his foot within the first, like within the first round mm. that can affect his mobility and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Um, in terms of what to do with Paddy next, this is a really interesting question because what, I, I, I generally look at these things from what I think the UFC's perspective is. Now, the UFC's perspective, in my opinion, should be how can we make as much money as possible off of Paddy Pimblett? That, that we've yeah. got this superstar on our books. How can we keep him a superstar for as long as humanly possible? In To do that, I don't think you want Paddy ranked. Because if you rank Paddy in the top 15, that's it then. He has to fight killers. Now, you can match him up with people in the top 15 that he's got a chance at beating. Tony Ferguson, he's definitely got a chance of beating Tony Ferguson. Dan Hooker, he's got a chance of beating Dan Hooker. <sighs> I'm looking at the rest of that list, though, and I'm going, I would not favour Paddy against anyone in the top 10. There's not a single person in that top 10 that I'd go Paddy's the favorite in that fight. Dan Hooker, I think it's a close fight, but I think a lot of I think the the betting odds would favor Dan Hooker. Renato Moicano, not sure. I mean, fuck me, the Conor McGregor fight. Do you know what? That's an unbelievable fight because you, you, that that is if you're the UFC, I think you're thinking to yourself, how can we make as much money as humanly possible? Conor's only got two fights left on his contract, I think. So he's not going to be around long. So I'm taking nothing away from Paddy, but he, he is four fights in the UFC. What a warmer that would be for Connor's comeback. Beat I mean, again, Paddy. and and, and no, no warm up as in like it's a gimme for Connor because no, we no, don't no, know no, what no, Connor's no, coming course, back. Of course. Prime Prime Connor beats this Paddy Pimlet for sure, but we haven't seen Prime Connor in a really long time. Mm. So I mean, yeah. Two, Connor's got two fights left on his contract. He's probably thinking to himself, I'll get out of this contract soon. I can go and make shit loads of money. Me and Nate Diaz can box each other for so much money outside yeah. of the UFC. Let me go and do that. So he wants to fight two fights off his contract. If you're the UFC, maybe you go, well, let's give Paddy in March another unranked guy that he's likely to beat. Maybe even a step back from Jared Gordon because we want him to, you know... Get, get Paddy on a six-fight win streak. You could get him ranked and go Tony Ferguson and say, Tony, fight in March at the O2, come to London, fight Paddy Pimblett. It's a tough fight, but it's, it's it's doable. And then Paddy's ranked. So maybe that's... All right. But I don't I don't favour Paddy in a ranked fight against anyone in the top 10. Um, yeah. So... Yeah. Let, you yeah, know. no, look, he can make improvements, but fuck me, we've seen him four fights in the UFC. He gets clipped in almost every single fight. And that, Jared, I mean... Unbelievable chin on him. Mm. But as we've seen people with really good chins, like like the Dan Hookers of the world and the Tony Ferguson's of the world, that chin doesn't look like it's depleting now. But I guarantee you, over the course of time, that chin will get progressive. It's like if anyone's played the UFC game, your chin has like a, a bar that lasts your entire career. And if you kept getting into wars and getting smashed, that deteriorates and you have to retire much quicker. Mm. Paddy's long-term chin kind of health bar, the way he's going, isn't going to last forever. Mm. It, it's going to be a, a difficult thing for him to continue getting clipped as much as he does. And he's not even being hit by the likes of the Michael Chandler's, the Conor McGregor's, the, but even Benil Dariush and Dustin Poirier with their um, power. I mean, Raphael Fazeev, uh, Jalen Turner. And then you've got the, the wrestling credentials, which maybe favours Paddy because he's so good at jiu-jitsu. But honestly, the wrestling credentials of the Gamrots, the Armand Sarukians, even the Rafael Dos Anjos, who's mm. popping up to welterweight now. I, I, I can't see Paddy being the betting favourite in any of those fights. No, but we, we've got to just, you know, we, we, to, to sort of end this on a positive, he's got the win. The hype train the continues. Yep. I imagine next gen are going to look at that performance and you know look at the the, the shortfallings of it 
uh, and look at where they can improve. And hopefully, you know, in London next year, we'll see Paddy against somebody. I mean, that, that Connor idea, I'm, I'm on board. I think that's really exciting. Tony Ferguson, I think that's exciting. Maybe we see him get, a, you know, a, 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 another unranked fighter uh, in, you know, as a warm-up and uh, to, to, to give him that sixth fight. Uh, win streak and to give him that highlight reel, you know, see if there's a highlight reel finish in it. I don't know, but he's got the W, the train continues, we're still on the train, and yeah, let's uh, let's hope we see uh, Paddy come back with a, a, a more dominant performance. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, from a fans and a UFC perspective, Paddy Pimblett versus Conor McGregor mm. is... Is that stupid. The big... It could it... be the biggest fight of all time. It could be the biggest fight. I think it could be the biggest fight that the UFC could put on right now. Yeah. Like, Engano Jones might give it a slight run for its money, but Connor versus anyone is already better than 95, 99% of fights the UFC can put on. Connor versus yeah. anyone. And you throw in a star like Paddy Pimblett. Mm. And again, if Paddy beats Connor, He's an even bigger star. Wow, Paddy beat Connor. This is fucking mental. We've made loads of money. Let's see what Paddy can do next. But yeah. Connor beats Paddy. Mm. Connor gets that one win. And we know every single champion wants that red panty night against Connor. You can get him to fight for a belt. And he could fight for a belt at welterweight or lightweight. If Paddy comes back, if Connor comes back and fights Paddy at lightweight, and I'm not saying this is earned, deserved meritocracy, it's not. It's business. Mm. If Connor comes back and beats Paddy Pimblett, in a fight at lightweight and then says, do you know what? Fuck it. I want to fight. Hopefully Leon Edwards for the welterweight belt because it's my last fight in the UFC uh, or it's you know last fight on my contract, whatever it is. I want to go for history and become a free weight world champion. Do you think Leon's going to say no? No. Do you think the UFC mm-hmm. are going to say no? I doubt it. They're going to want that fight. Mm. All right. Ponsonibio, Alex Morono. So this was meant to have been um, Robbie Lawler. Yep. And uh, and and I presume Robbie's it was it was an injury to put Robbie out. I presume. I so. believe so. Yep. Um, Alex Morono stepped in at probably less than a week's notice, and I mean, fair play to that boy. I thought he put on a, a phenomenal, mm-hmm. uh, phenomenal performance, and and I would probably, if it went to the scorecards, um, I probably would have been leaning towards him to get the win. Um, yep. Some fantastic spinning um, back fists. Um, I think. Quite uh, on, on several points in that fight, Ponzinibbio looked a little bit kind of oh shit, I, I was not banking on this, and and, and I think yeah. Morano was was gassing come the third, yeah, you know because he's not had a proper fight camp, you know he's obviously must be staying in, in good shape, but yeah, I thought he looked phenomenal. Yeah, I, I thought he looked good, particularly in the first round. Second round, I think Ponzinibbio came back a lot and and maybe even slightly edged that round. But um, it was definitely close, and Morono was putting on a really good show. I then start the third round. Morono rattles Ponzinibbio again, and you think, "Oh, this is going Morono's way. Maybe even he could get a finish." And then Ponzinibbio just hit him with that big right hand, and Morono's face, side of his face, seemed to droop and just seize up like he couldn't like close his mouth. But it it looked really brutal and, and and bad and I think Morono was slightly disputing the stoppage afterwards but there was nothing wrong with that stoppage that no, was that was bad Ponzinibbio came back well from I think a position where he probably was going to lose that fight mm. um so yeah credit credit to him and, and what's great as well is Dana White said that he was really impressed with Morono thought he was brilliant that he took the fight on short notice as well and he's paying Morono his win money so that's so Morono stepped in, got show money, but then it's Morono's also got his win money because he put on such performance. And this again is the kind of Dana White way of like Ankalaev, you won a boring or well, it was a split draw, but you you know, we all thought you won a really boring fight. You're not gonna fight for the belt next. It's gonna be Glover and uh, um Jamal Hill. Also, Dana White had a lot to say about going back to the paddy fight, Jared Gordon's approach to round three. He said, you know you did really well in that fight. Why did you come out in round three and just want to push him up against the fence and hold him there? That That's, you know, that's not going to do you any favours. And now, look, the judges didn't score it for you. Um, he also said the ref should have done more to kind of move that fight along and get that fight going. It's like, 
you can't do that. You've let yourself down type thing is is uh, what Dana was saying regarding... Fucking hell. Rough night in the office for Gordon. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, I, I know he, he, he wasn't overly happy with him. I do think rough night for, for Gordon, for sure. I don't think he's got anything to be ashamed of in that fight. I thought he did really, really well. Um, but Dana, again, not overly pleased with it. So that's another reason why I think Morono come out, fought his ass off. Got a beat, but still getting his win money because Dana was really pleased with the way he conducted himself. Um, so there you go. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, but that's how the UFC operates. Um, let's Duplicis. go to... Oh, and the gorilla, the gorilla come back. Um, I mean, right right from the off, like, I thought Drickus looked... I mean, the first round is completely dominant. Um, yep. and and breeze that round, and I, I think till maybe was it rust? I don't know. Just 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 looked like he he didn't know what was going on. He just looked like he was just being sort of pulled around. Um, Drickers looked so strong as well, so much stronger yep. than Darren Till. Um, I, I thought Till was obviously got in good shape. Um. But I think at, at, at one eight five, I don't know. I I, I thought the, the strength of of Drickus seemed to be quite a factor. I thought one thing I didn't see much from Darren Till. Um, he wasn't kicking, and and I, and I just I just don't know why he wasn't kicking. He's got such heavy legs, and and he was just there was, doing. Go there on. was a moment as as he was walking out the cage. John Anik said he thinks he over overheard. Um, Darren Till mentioning his ACL and that he thinks he blew out his ACL quite early in the fight, maybe. Right, okay. Yeah. Although there was that moment, it, I can't remember, was it round two where Drickus had that kind of like heel hook position? Yeah, yeah. In round two, maybe it was rolling, that. Right at the end of the maybe, round, Maybe it, it was that that did it, yeah. I don't yeah. know. So maybe maybe he did it in round two. I don't know, but it was a really rough night at the office for Darren. Yeah, that's not how you want your, your return because in all that the hype leading up to it and, you know, he seemed to be in a really good place. Uh, he'd been out at Tiger Muay Thai and and looked like you know he's having the time of his life. Obviously, you'd you know Brendan Lockman in his corner. You'd seen obviously you'd imagine when it went to the ground, he was going to see. It. He was hoping to see uh, a very different Darren Till after all of the training with Hamza, mm -hmm. and we we didn't really get an opportunity to see any of that. Um, I, I do like that that sort of like dummy left hand and just sort of throwing it out there and that straight, sorry, uh, right hand and that straight left of Darren's, he's, he's, he's a big shot. We didn't, I don't know, it's hard to say because I never knew the thing about um, Drick is saying, look, you know, if you see that I'm breathing through my mouth, it's not exhaustion, you know. Um, he looked exhausted. He did look, I mean, I think when he was trying yeah. to choke him in the in the, in the, was it the end of the second or the end of the first, I remember. I um, you just when he was doing them strikes, he was just thinking like, God, how much has he gassed himself there? And sh I mean, Darren seemed to be constantly saying to the ref, "I'm all right, I'm all right." But there was a lot of unanswered strikes, and you yeah, know, I mean, I do think they most of them were blocked and they were short strikes. I mean, yeah, I mean, they clearly did a number on him mm. to an extent, but I, I think it's good that the ref didn't stop that fight. Darren yeah. kept giving the thumbs up, saying he was fine, but the ref kept warning him, kept warning him. I, I actually felt that that was dealt with pretty yeah. well. Um, a fire will always that, say they're all right. They don't know because sometimes they've not got the sense, the the, the, yeah. the, the senses to do it because yeah, they've yeah. been sort of Maybe, semi knocked yeah. out. I, I I I don't I don't know. I I I think that was in that situation. I think that was okay. Um, I think that I've realised my battery is very low on my laptop, so I better quickly charge that. But um, <laughs> we're playing. We're getting dicey here. I think Till maybe won the second round. The thing that was just really disappointing, as you said, because they've been with Hamzat for a while, his takedown defense was still really poor. Yeah. Like, re really, like Drickus, I haven't come out of this thinking Drickus is some killer. I'm mm. actually less high on Drickus now than I was pre fight. Right. I, I think Drickus gassed really quick. I think that his striking. He's, he's game for it. He wants to go for those strikes and everything and, and get into a bit of a war, but he's not as technically gifted as Darren by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I think some of his shots were like from way out mm. and they looked a little bit lazy. Sounds like a harsh word, but sometimes it's just tired. They look tired. They look like yeah. tired shots. 
and Darren still couldn't defend them and got taken down. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, I didn't come out of that thinking either of these guys is going to be a problem at the real top of that division. And I think, you know, I, I don't think Drickus does to most other fighters. Like, I, I don't think Drickus does to a Marvin Vittori or a Roman Delize or, or anyone like that what he did to Darren Till. I, I think Vittori beats Drickus Duplessis. But I, I, just... I, I... I I'm watched the charge this while you talk. Okay, I did see an interview with with Darren um, post. Uh, looks like sort of back in his hotel room where he was saying, you know, this is not going to be a retirement speech. I'm 29, and he was saying that throughout training, um, you know, he's been training with such high level people and feels great. Feels like he holds his own. But he said, when I got in the the octagon, I just can't seem to. Can't seem to get it get it off properly, and and that must be really frustrating um, because there's always eyes on Darren Till because he was you know fast tracked like Paddy, you know he became a superstar very quickly after the Cerrone win, and he was thrust into the you know some some big fights perhaps before his time, um, and obviously he come unstuck in a few of those, um, and you wonder what that's you know what that that's done to you mentally, you know when it when it comes to the big you know, the, the big events and, and, and walking in that, you always strikes me as somebody that's got bags of confidence, but, you know, if there's something that's just, you know, but, but you know, for, uh, alluding to what he was saying, if there's something that when you're, you're in the octagon and you just can't get it to move properly, then, you know, you've got to have a little look at, at things. I'm sure that's what him and his team are going to do, but, um, you know, he's a Brit and he's, that's not what I wanted to see. Uh, obviously, I'd love to have seen Darren Till come back, you know, Darren Till 2.0, whatever we're going to call him, you know, ready to ragdoll anyone after months and months and months with, with Hamza. Um, and, yeah, I mean, his striking looked pretty solid in the second round. I thought, you know, we, we, you could tell he'd been, uh, he threw some nice elbows, you could tell he'd been doing his Muay Thai and it, and it, looked, it looked good, but it, it didn't. Yeah, like you say, you start looking in that top 10 and, yeah, it, there, there, there's some killers in there that I wouldn't want to see him in there with at the moment. I hope he, no. he goes back to the drawing board and comes back a, a better fighter. He's always, you know, always going to have eyes on him. He's always going to be an exciting fighter yeah. to Darren Till. Um, yeah, just hope that, you know, he recovers and, 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 you know, for want of a better word, takes this one on the chin and, and comes back. Yeah. I mean, it, this was definitely a vast improvement on the Darren Till that fought Derek Brunson. Well, like, he, he looked very... way more conditioned. He yeah. looked like he was way more into it. It was a terrible first round for him. He just, he, he looked like he came out wanting to put pressure on. And I was like, yes, this is that. And then seconds later, it's like he was on his back and he couldn't, couldn't get up properly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it seems to be, it's so surprising given the last kind of how long he's been around Hamza and stuff that he's, he just didn't look like, and I don't think of Drickers as the best wrestler. So I just I don't I don't know what I don't know what happened there. I, was it the ACL? Did he tear his ACL early and just couldn't get back to his feet? I I don't know, but I mean, look, Darren can still earn loads of good money. He will still have opportunities. He's still a, a fighter that a lot of fans do like. He's got he, his only fans now, hasn't he? He's got his only fans. He is someone that I think can definitely um, have fun fights, mm -hmm. but I think. I only really, I don't really want to see him fight anyone with any good grappling because yeah. I think I feel like I know how that fight's going to go immediately. I want to see Darren. I almost want a few guys from welterweight to come up to middleweight to fight Darren, like Michelle Pereira or, or Wonderboy Thompson. Redo that fight. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I would like to see Wonderboy fight, uh, fight Masvidal. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe a Joaquin Buckley who lost on the, to, to Chris Curtis. Because mm. Joaquin Buckley's not going to shoot for a takedown. No, uh, Joaquin so... Buckley's got some fucking heavy hands. We'll get onto them. He does, yeah. Look, anyway. This is a fight that I think most people thought had potential to be fight of the night. Uh, and, uh, well, it delivered, didn't it? Uh, Ilya Tapuria versus Bryce Mitchell. Um, yeah. Both undefeated in the UFC. Um I think Tapuria sent a message out last night that he's not to be messed with. And I don't think yeah. there's many fighters looking at uh, licking their lips to fight him at the moment. Absolutely not. I think he has been a problem for a long time. I mean, again, the way he kind of dispatched of, um, 
of Jai Herbert right. upper weight class, the way he dealt with um, uh, Ryan Hall. He's legit. This fight, I, I tipped to Puria to win it. I felt like he was going to win it because he was going to have way better striking and be more powerful. Um, and that's sort of how it played out. I think I expected Bryce to do a bit more, though. Um, I don't I think, think he could. Goes... I don't think he could get close to him. I don't think he'll no. get them, them takedowns in because like Puri's boxing and footwork was phenomenal, and the strikes were powerful. And you know, it, it cut Bryce early. And and I think I don't think Bryce realised like what he'd got himself into. He looked a little bit like uh, after the first round, like oh, dear, this is uh, I've got a big fight on my hands here. And and yeah. I don't think as as it started to sort of progress. He had that many answers when it went to the ground, where you thought, you know, Mitchell was going to really excel. Tapuria looked very comfortable there. I think what happened though was that Bryce ate too many shots prior to that, so wasn't the like. If you said to Bryce Mitchell and Ilya Tapuria, um, start on the ground and fight from there, no one's allowed to get up for a minute. I think Bryce Mitchell does very, very well in that fight. But so I don't think it's like a lack of. Uh, like I don't think Tapuri is necessarily a better grappler than Bryce or anything like that, even though he got the submission. I think he really softened Bryce up on the feet. And the Bryce Mitchell that went to the ground was at like half capacity mm. because he'd already been beaten up a little bit on yeah. the feet. Um, yeah, and, and, and he did just look amazing. I mean, I'm trying to look at the the, the rankings now at featherweight. Um, Tapuri is a real problem. He is now going to be ranked in the top 10. He's going to be ninth. Uh, again, I, because we I didn't have a huge amount of time, I didn't get the time to kind of go through who I think he should fight next. But I think, what is he like? What's his record now? 12-0, and 13-0, and 0, yeah. something like that. Korean I mean, zombie. you could definitely do a career. Uh, he called out Brian Ortega, which is a great fight. I, mm. I can, I, I, I'd, I'd watch that for sure. Korean zombie, Brian Ortega. I, uh, I don't know whether he would fight Giga Chikadze or not because they're both Georgian and I know that uh, I don't know if they train together or anything like that and I know sometimes when you get these kind of uh, nations that aren't as heavily represented um, like you would like the Americans, the Russians, something like that, they've got such a big roster of fighters that fight in the UFC. When you get nations that are less represented, I think they, they don't really want to fight each other so much. Mm. Um, so I don't know whether you'd get Giga versus Taporia or not. Um, I'd certainly favour Taporia in that fight. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, th I think you could definitely give this guy a really good good shot, though. I don't want to see them bring him over to London to fight Arnold Allen. No, he, he's, he does not deserve a, a, no chance. He's not. Well, no, Arnold Allen deserves... Uh, Arnold but, Allen deserves but, a much, much bigger fight than that. Why would you risk it to fight, fighting him? No chance. Yeah, but for the UFC have already... I think the UFC have already shown their cards with Arnold Allen. I don't think they are overly bothered. And uh, that, that sounds horrible. I, I, I'm bothered. I I think it is a travesty that Arnold Allen is not fighting for an interim title. Absolutely. But what are the UFC doing? A lot of people are saying Max Holloway. I don't like that fight. Why are you putting Max Holloway in the way of someone that's on a 10 fight win streak that should be fighting for the belt. Why? Like, what, what do you, what do you gain from that? You gain nothing. Let Max have some time to put on a little bit of weight and give him fun fights against people that also are probably not going to do a huge amount anymore. Like, like a Justin Gaethje or a Mark, mm. let, let Max go up there and have a laugh up there. Just to have some incredible fights up at lightweight with some, some huge stars and make loads of money. Okay. Don't, you don't do Arnold Allen, Max Holloway. That no one's gained. I don't feel like anyone's really gained. If I mean, yeah, if Arnold beats Max for sure, you should be giving Arnold a title shot. But you can't because you've got an interim title shot between um uh, um uh, Yair Emmett. Rodriguez and and Josh Emmett. So Volkanovski goes and fights Makachev. If he wins, then the lightweight's going to go crazy and um uh featherweight. I, I don't know that he will defend that belt, but you never know. But you've got the likelihood is Makachev wins that fight. And then you've got Volkanovsky then has to fight the winner of Yair and Emmett. Uh, when does that happen? Summer of next year? So Arnold's beat Max and then has to wait till like December. I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't really like it as a fight that much. I mean, it'd be great to see Max Holloway live at the O2. If we can go and see Max Holloway live. Yeah. 
that would be something I'd be really happy about because I love mm. Max Holloway. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I can see a world in which the UFC go, well, Arnold Allen should fight on that March card. Who have we got? Oh, uh, well, you know, Movzar Evloev, Topuri has just looked really good. We'll, we'll throw him in. And, and then Arnold Allen again could be on an 11 fight win streak, but he's still fighting people that are ranked so far behind him that everyone goes, oh, but who's he for? And it's just, yeah, I don't know. It winds me up. He should be fighting for a belt. Arnold Allen should be fighting for the belt, and that's it. Anyway. Bryce Mitchell, I'm sure uh, we'll see plenty more of. He's, he's, he's a young lad, and, uh, you know, he's obviously had a uh, his first UFC, UFC defeat. Often see fighters come back, learning from stuff like that. Oh, um, clearly, Bryce Mitchell uh, is one of the most uh, deepest uh, and, and wisest men in the UFC. Uh, so I'm sure he'll draw... Uh, from that intellect and come back uh, bigger and better. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> next up, we've got uh, the golden boy, uh, uh, Raul, um, Raul Rosas Jr. Uh, versus Jay Perrin, uh, headlining the uh, the prelims. Super hype uh, around Raul and uh, from from winning the contender series, uh, the Dana White's contender series. To making his debut at 18 years of age, um, I, I thought the commentary team were a bit overexcited about this. Um, it was a solid finish, rear naked choke, you know, in, in, end of the first round, perfect start uh, to your UFC career. Um, yeah, I mean, he couldn't have done any more, but didn't yeah. really get to see a lot of him. So, uh, you know, I, I, if you're 18 years of age, you've had a good night. Yeah, I've really absolutely. got a lot more I, to say about it. I know you haven't seen no, this fight yet. I haven't seen this one. This is the one that I haven't seen. So yeah. I've seen the other uh, um, it was dominant. Uh, prelim fights. It was dominant, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it couldn't have done any more. And he, he got the finish quite quickly. Um, right. One of the, the fights that... Uh, do you know what got... Well, I've not seen what got fight of the night and stuff yet. Do you know what did? Till versus Duplessis got fight of the night. Right, okay. Performance um, I bonuses, don't, do you know? I, I didn't see that. I don't right. know. Tapuria no, must sure. have, have got one of them, I imagine. And I'm sure you, Rosen you would have thought probably got one. <laughs> because yeah, I mean, you, you would think. You would he think. won on overtime I mean, last night, was he? I wouldn't be surprised if they gave something to Santiago Ponzinibbio. I mean, uh, that was yeah. quite an, a good fight and a good comeback as well. I so I, I don't know. I don't know what won that. Maybe Raul Rosas Jr. got one. I don't know. Mm. Young guy, give him some money. Um, yeah. Chris Curtis as well. I mean, uh, he, he had a good one. But as you, you mentioned, let's just quickly go through it now. Rosenstrike smashed through twenty three seconds. I mean, he just hurt him quick. I didn't even see it. He just all of a sudden he was just on skates and Josino yeah. was just chasing him around the octagon. God, that must be scary. You do not <laughs> want that big boy chasing you, do you? <laughs> no, no, you don't. Especially um, if you don't really know what's going on at the time. No, I mean fun fight uh, that could come up next uh, for for Rosenstrike. I'd like to see maybe Derek Lewis. I know Derek Lewis is on a bit of a losing streak, but he is two places above Rosenstrike, and I think That's it's a fight that I Lewis think, could definitely. win. It's a fun fight. It could headline a fight night. Jobs are yeah. good on Rosenstrike, Lewis. Because Rosenstrike has fought a lot of the guys in that um, uh, heavyweight division. I don't think he's fought tied to Ivasa, though. That could be another good one. But mm. Derek Lewis was was my pick. Um, Shabazian comes back with a win. Oh, after, like, thank on, like, God. A like, losing streak. When when you look at what... what He was on such a tear, and then it yep. just went bad. And yep. what a fight that was as well last night. Um, both, I mean... Um, uh, Let's have a go at this. Lange um, yeah, good. Le- thanks. Uh, left leg. Um, he, he kind of uh, <laughs> oh, he, he, had, he had like one one short up and one short down. The fucking size of that geezer's thighs was unreal. Now, when you oh, think yeah. you would not want to get kicked by that, but it was the the flying knee of uh, Shabazian that, that that done the yeah. damage and and. Yeah, he's, he he looked great last. They both looked great. I thought it was a really really good yeah. fight. Um, yeah. And yeah, good to see him get a a, a win. I'm sure, you know, a, a, a finan- not you know financially aside, so mentally that's going to do in the world of good. Getting a, a solid win over, yeah. you know, a, a scary looking um, 
fighter. So yeah, yeah, props to him. Um, yep. Chris Curtis, uh, Joaquin Buckley, I, I thought was a yep. really good fight, and I thought yep. Buckley was winning that fight. I thought he was just like just punches in punches. He was just throwing more yep. and more, and he was just outworking Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis, when he threw, looked solid, and and they were more kind of well thought out and uh, and precise strikes. But yeah, I. I, I Fair play to Chris Curtis because, you know, he done what he needed to do and he made it yep. can. And, you know, I, I think he was losing that fight. You agree with that? Yeah, I think so. He, he did a really good job in that set. It was a second round, wasn't it, where he just caught mm-hmm. that kick and laid a punch straight on Buckley's chin. And then that, that was the beginning of the end. That was it. Um, but I, I think Buckley was doing well. As I said, I think someone like Joaquin Buckley could be a great fight for Darren Till because yep. he's going to bring the fight to him. But he's probably not going to shoot any takedowns, so Till just has to stand up, and that's maybe the fight, type of fights Till needs to have. Yeah, something more exciting. We can see an exciting stand-up fight, hopefully, and and that'll be that'll be that. Chris Curtis, I'm I'm not quite sure what happens with Chris Curtis next. Obviously, he's coming off that loss to uh, Jack Manson. Did he have another fight in between that time? I'm not sure. I don't um, think so. Yeah, so I don't know. Does he fight up the rankings? Does he fight? Up? Down the rankings, uh, I'm I'm not really sure with 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 Chris what you what you do next. And really, he's obviously he's defended his spot, um, but I don't I don't know I don't know that I actually see him doing phenomenally well mm. fighting up the rankings loads. Um, so I mean, and and, and Chris, Chris Curtis doesn't use his wrestling very often, but he can wrestle, and that's another reason why I'm not sure that I do want him to fight Darren Till. But you could make that fight. Um, yeah, I think kind of anyone for Chris Curtis. I, I don't see Chris Curtis ever fighting for a belt. He's been in the game a very, very long time. He's relatively new to the UFC, but gosh, he's had nearly like 40 fights or something crazy um, in his pro MMA career. He's worked at the PFL and other organizations as well. So he is a, he's a veteran. And I think at this stage in his career, earn some money, go get some fights. It, you don't always need to be going with title aspirations. Just what you were saying there about, like, you know, just give Darren some, 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 you know, tailored fights. And I don't mean tailored by beatable, but like, you know, what could be, you know, uh, an interesting fight in, in Joaquin Buckley. But it seems crazy, doesn't it, that we're, we're having these conversations about Darren Till, but not, not about him getting a title shot, but let's, let's just see, you know, just give him some fun fights at, at 29 when you, you, you look at, you know, who he was being matched against and who he was being, you know, talked about alongside and things like that it, it's been a a scary descent for Darren Till hasn't it and and I really really do hope just to sort of start to wrap things up really hope that you know he I, I love how honest he was in that that social media post and I, and I hope that what was the social media post I didn't see it it was the one I just mentioned where he said this is not it was when you was putting your charger on I don't know if you heard me but um oh. he was saying this isn't a retirement Speech. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No. That. And and I think that you know, he, he he's a likable lad, Darren Till. And yeah, I just really hope that you know we we see him because you know he, he he's a big name in in, in UK MMA and, and you know and has took it to the world scene. So let's hope we uh, we see a new and improved Darren Till. I just wanted to say that. Again. Yeah. I don't know why. No, I just felt I, just felt, I felt no. a bit sorry for him last night. And and there's been times previously where. I've watched Darren Till fights and watched, you know, his social media and just thought, oh, easy, mate, like, calm down. But, uh, you know, he seemed like a very humble, humble man last yeah. night. And uh, it's, yeah. it's nice to see that side of his character and and hopefully that, you know, we'll see good things from him in the future. And I, I agree with you. I think Joaquin Buckley fight will be a, a good stand-up match. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, he's fought, he's, when you deep dive into Darren's resume, it's not actually amazing mm-hmm. and it's one of those ones where you kind of go did you maybe overachieve down at welterweight and now think that you know the sport progresses so quick i mean look i, I want to see darren do well but i mean you're going i'm looking at his record now i mean the donald cerrone win was the one that really made him a superstar I was in, that? in a sense six years ago that five was back ago. in 2017, so five years ago, and that was a phenomenal win. Then he beat Wonderboy Thompson after missing weight quite a bit, 
And it was a decision that a lot of people didn't give to Darren, but the judges did, importantly. Lost to Tyron, lost to Masvidal, which is, I think, the fight that really changed him. Mm. Uh, that KO, I think, really affected him. Then he pops up to middleweight, beats Kelvin Gastelum in, again, I think it was a split decision. Yep, split decision. So by no means an amazing... And Kelvin Gastelum... Yes, Kelvin Gastelum was coming off of that phenomenal fight with Adesanya. Unbelievable. So it, even a split decision over Gastelum at the time felt like it had gravity to it. But looking back on it now with 2022 eyes, it doesn't look like the, the, the most amazing win in the world. Then a loss to Robert Whittaker. No shame in that. Everyone loses to Whittaker. Then the Derek Brunson fight where he just didn't look himself at all. Mm. Uh, lost that and he just he just didn't look like he was maybe training properly or something I'm not sure and then he came in here and I think put on a a good show but the takedowns were just and it's when he was standing he looked good but the takedowns he was just so susceptible to them even when I felt like Drickus wasn't even in the best place to get him down so I mean what the fuck do I know I don't know anything but it's 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 concerning I think uh the, the situation with Darren. So yeah, hopefully he, he stays away from some grapplers. Hopefully he can get a win against someone like Buckley and we'll we'll see where we end up. Absolutely. Um well look, uh, if you've uh, if you just stumbled onto this podcast for the first time, thank you for listening. Um thanks to all of you uh, for supporting this podcast this year. Um and there will be plenty more next year. Um I think we're probably going to do a little Christmas special maybe looking back over the year. We're going to try and get something like that in, aren't we? Doing a yes. little bit of a um, well, we need to go over our we need to go over our pitch. So if you don't know it, back in uh, January of this year, I think it was, we made some predictions as to Fucking who we hell. thought were going to be champions. <laughs> That's going to be a shocking <laughs> isn't it? Be, yeah. <laughs> so um sooner or later we'll be putting out an episode where we look at how badly <laughs> We yeah. predicted the champions at the end of the wow. year. And then we will make new predictions for that next year. That will probably be just as fucking way off the mark as what we said in January of 2022. Well, we certainly Absolutely. wouldn't have uh, said that we'd, we'd end the year with a vacant light heavyweight title. Um, oh, God, no. Uh, no. Which is pretty crackers. But um, all in all, uh, I thought it was a, a solid card last night. Um, go check out the back catalogue um, if you've missed any episodes. If you're big Paddy fans, go and have a look because there's countless episodes where we've, we've chatted to the baddie. Um, and also, uh, Fella Scousers, um, Molly Meatball McCann, and um, our next gen fighters, Matt Bonner and. Nathan Fletcher. Uh, Nathan Fletcher, yeah, as well. And obviously, you know, I don't know if you already just said this, but the likes of Tyron Woodley and, and, and Alexander Volkanovsky and Michael Bisping, Dan Hardy, Mark Goddard. Have you just said these already? I don't know. No, I haven't. No, I'm no. Not lie. But there you go. There's some good ones there for you. And obviously, our most rec- one of our most recent chats with the new title challenger in the light heavyweight division, yeah. Jamal Hill. Go and listen to Jamal Hill. It's a really good, lovely chat that we only did a little while ago. So uh, absolutely, so go and check that out. I definitely yeah. recommend our chat with Brendan Lockman as well, who's obviously in the corner with Darren last night, who's uh, $1 million richer after uh, a, a, winning, a big yes. win in the, in the PFL. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next time. In the meantime, I don't know. What, 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 what are you doing in the meantime? Be nice. Yeah, be be good to people. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your Se- Christmas season. You season of goodwill and all that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. God, this is a long little way to say goodbye. I thought you were going to say see you later. And now <laughs> you're like, you. what do you do? Like, what do you do in the meantime? I run out, I run I out of steam of things to say. I was starting. I was like, yeah. ah, just uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, run out. No. Now get your Christmas shopping done, guys. Later. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>